So Jared, what would you like to be when you grow up? A game developer. Like someone who makes games? Like a game maker? Yeah, except they're called game developers. How old are you, Jared? I'm 35. But Jared, this is a grade 5 classroom. According to Google, you can be too old for game dev. Apparently my brain has already started to deteriorate. I see no evidence, though. Uh? What's my line again? This is a question that gets asked a lot. In fact, I asked it myself not too long ago. As someone in their mid-30s with an established career, it seemed like a good question to be asking myself. I have a family, and I've put a lot of time into my career in finance. So is starting over at my age a bad idea? Now, based on research and my own experiences, I noticed some common reasons why people might be asking this question in the first place. So before I give my opinion on whether or not I think you're too old to start over at a certain age, let's talk about what the potential reasons could be, and then maybe we can debunk some of these in a few minutes. If you're just interested in game development, but you haven't actually started yet, there's a great deal of stuff to learn. This takes time, and I think that we can all agree there is a lot to learn with game development. Programming by itself, even if you're doing a visual scripting solution, is still a really daunting task, but there is so much to add on top of that as well. And so there's definitely an intimidation factor there. We could also be talking about crunch time. The game development industry is notorious for crunch time, where developers have periods of time where they work massive, massive amounts of overtime in order to meet a deadline. And this can be true for indie developers as well. There's always pressure to meet deadlines, whether it's for a publisher, a loyal fan base waiting for you, or you're just wanting to meet some goals by a specific time. And not everyone wants to deal with having that kind of a workload put on them. It's hard on anyone, but it is particularly tough on families. And so it's really understandable that not everyone is going to want to be a part of that. There's also the matter of how much free time do you have? Younger people will just often have fewer demands and fewer responsibilities than people who are a little bit older. And obviously there's exceptions to everything, but generally this is the way it is. So one could argue that younger people that have fewer responsibilities have more free time to make and play games, which gives them a little bit of an edge. For me, I have a really hard time making time to play video games. And I also know that it's really important because in order to be at my highest level of creativity, I have to absorb different styles and different types of games just to help me keep my creative juices flowing all of the time. Let's talk about the next issue that might make you question if you are too old to start game development. There's a booger on my finger. What do I do with it? Let's put a pin in that one and answer a different question. Can you make money making video games? Now, obviously everyone knows that you can make money, but I think what people are really asking when they talk about this issue is, is it a viable source of income? Can I quit my full-time job when I have a mortgage and a family and bills and financial responsibilities coming out of my ears. So there is a lot of scary information out there and the statistics do vary from site to site. But after doing some research, I knew going into this industry that it potentially has up to a 95% failure rate, meaning 95% of all indie developers that actually finish and publish their game, 95% of them do not break even. They lose money or they don't make enough to fund starting a second project. There are a lot of numbers floating around out there that are absolutely terrifying. And a few years back, despite how badly I wanted to be a game developer, I had kind of mentally grouped it with the term starving artist. Like if you want to have this awesome job where you get to make games for a living, then you gotta be poor and that that was just how it was and when you hear statistics like 95 percent failure rate it's really easy to understand where that kind of mindset can come from i always thought that game developers that had youtube channels were better positioned to market their games after all some of them have really massive audiences that they can share their games with and yet even when i saw videos where they reported their sales numbers i often thought a lot of the numbers that were reported were severely underwhelming and as someone who always wanted to be a game developer 
and have a YouTube channel to promote their game, I found this really, really discouraging. And I'm sure that some of you might be in that boat as well. Steam takes 30%. Kickstarter takes 5% plus an additional 3 to 5% payment processing fee. Publishers can take anywhere from 10 to 40% depending on their terms. So even the numbers that you see in YouTube thumbnails where they say my game made this much money, that's not even actually true because of how much gets taken up front. And so it's definitely understandable why people with families and mortgages and all of that may not want to take that risk. God damn it, Jared, just flick it. Ah, it went in my eye. So when I was 20, long before I was making videos about booger flicking on the internet, I wanted a respectable job. I wanted to be taken seriously. I wanted to be seen as intelligent and responsible. And this was definitely an ego thing of mine. But also on the other hand, I just kind of wanted to be seen as a proper grown up. Nikki and I had our son when we were quite young and that can make it really feel like all eyes are on you. What are you gonna do now? Are you still gonna go to school? and? things like that. But my story is not unique, and not even to people who had kids at a young age. I think that as a society, we can sometimes use our jobs or our businesses or whatever we do for a living to define us in some way. I went to school for accounting and I did some financial analysis work for a while. I was underpaid, I was underworked, but I did feel like a real grown up, you know, whatever that means. But that is how I felt at the time. It was kind of like I can hold my head up high when people ask me what I do for a living. Financial analysts sounded like something that might be a little bit complicated and a little bit boring and people might assume that I'm paid well and respect me for it. This was my thought process anyways, and I've grown out of that mindset since then. But I know that a lot of people operate this way. But still, when someone asks me what I do for a living and I tell them I I'm a game developer and a YouTuber. I get this feeling that comes over me that makes me feel really silly for lack of a better word. Like I just kind of automatically assume that people are gonna be like, what the f seriously? That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. What are you, 12? So you just play video games all day long? I play video games all day long. Now, don't get me wrong, this is a dream of mine, and I take a lot of pride in the fact that my wife and I are doing everything that we possibly can to make this work. But that embarrassment factor with this still isn't gone yet. Telling people what I do, game development and YouTube, doesn't make me want to hold my head high yet. It's still a moment that makes me feel embarrassed and judged and a little bit sheepish, and I'll often look for any way to kind of shut the conversation down or talk about something else. Jared! It's call to action time. I need you to tell the viewers to like the video. I'm a little busy getting... Ha! I got it. God damn it, Jared. Just flick it. Just then. Ah, it's in my eye again. If you are an indie game developer, then you are very likely going to wind up on YouTube looking at tutorials or game development content at some point. And most of these guys in the videos are pretty young. Like 98% of the YouTubers that I watch look like they're fresh out of school. And as a game developer, you are very likely going to have to learn some programming at some point. And I think that that industry by itself can also have that kind of young person label attached to it. So it can be really easy to get discouraged when you really, really want something, but all of your idols that you're watching and learning from are half your age. Okay, so here's the thing. It takes a lot of time to learn game dev. It is a steep learning curve. And yes, crunch time still is a thing in this industry, although I think it is a bit less of a thing for solo developers unless you're putting that kind of pressure on yourself. I don't think your age has to be an issue with any of this. Regardless of how much or how little free time you have, if there's something that you want to learn, then you will use your free time to learn it. If you have a little less free time because you have a job and a family and various other responsibilities or hobbies or whatever, then it's just going to take a little bit longer to learn. No big deal. 
doesn't mean that you shouldn't start. Make the time for yourself and then do it on the side while you learn. It really doesn't matter if it's a slow game for you as long as it's something that you really want. When I first got into game development, I often had less than an hour a day to actually work on my games. And sometimes I had to get up early before work time in order to be able to fit that in. The point is do what works for your schedule. Now, regarding money, yes, 95% of indie devs do not break even. But guess what? Zoom out from game development for just a second and go into the business world. 90% of startups fail there too. So these scary statistics that you're hearing, they are not exclusive to game development. Uh -huh. As a game developer, unless you have a job and you're working for someone else, then you are doing it as an entrepreneur. And entrepreneurship has a really high fail rate. There are so many places you can go wrong. And I think that a lot of people can get sucked into the magic of making games, but fall under the delusion that the games will sell themselves. And most of those people, they're not going to do very well in this industry. This is an art, but it is also a business. And I don't have any experience making money from my own games yet, and I don't pretend to. I'm simply parroting what other really successful game developers have said, and also what I've learned through research and my own experiences with entrepreneurship. Can you make money making games? Yes, absolutely. You can make a lot of money making video games. Many people have, and age has nothing to do with it. What it takes is perseverance, hard work, overcoming failures, and the willingness to treat your game like it's a business product. Now, when it comes to embarrassment about your profession, as I'm kind of learning right now, this is just kind of something I need to grow into. Game developers make products that entertain and inspire people. That is a damn noble thing to do. There's nothing to be embarrassed about there. And actually, moreover, I would say that a good game developer finds a way to kind of channel the inner kid in themselves. Because most of us that are here wanting to do this as a profession for a living, most of us grew up playing video games and you were probably inspired by some of them. It's about finding that childlike wonder that you had in yourself once and then channeling it into your game so that it can then go on to inspire somebody else. The reality is that as a game developer, you're just going to have to learn how to get comfortable being who you want to be. And part of this is learning how to let go what you think other people think about you. And if you can't do this, it's really hard to follow your dreams and find the happiness that you're looking for. If I leave it in there, will it dissolve? And if you think this is a young person's game, that's only because this hasn't been an open opportunity for all that long. My generation was the first generation to really grow up playing video games. The industry itself is kind of new as far as industries go. And as far as individuals making money from making video games, Unity was the first widely popular game engine that was free. Well, it wasn't free at first, but it became free in 2009, and that was only 13 years ago. So it seems like a young person's game because the video game industry is still in its infancy. So what I am trying to say is yes, if you are watching this video, then you are definitely too old for game development. Uh? I am kidding. Did I fool you? I didn't fool anyone. You fooled me.